How important are statistics in tennis? Really important when you look at them in detail. Let's look, for instance, at 2001, the semi-final between Tim Henman and Goran Ivanisevic. Ivanisevic was a huge server, 36 aces to Tim Henman's seven. What it meant was that Henman could not get into the game properly for extended periods of time, and Ivanisevic, when he needed to, could produce the big serve that turned the game in his favour, and he ultimately won the match and went on to win the title. Federer and Nadal final of 2008, widely regarded as one of the great matches of all time. Now Federer, who was at the peak of his powers, made considerably more unforced errors than Nadal in that match. Ultimately, Nadal held his nerve better than Federer in a fantastic contest, and his unforced errors were a key factor in that result. That's wide, and that could be the crucial blow. Taylor Dent has got one of the biggest serves in the history of tennis. It's 148 miles an hour. Unfortunately, he was unable to convert that into serious momentum in the course of the match. He didn't win any of his breakpoint conversions, whereas Djokovic won one in two of those. So every time Djokovic got a chance to break, he did. And Dent, striving for speed, because he knew that was his one weapon that was going to cause inconvenience for Djokovic, made 11 double faults. They're easy points in tennis, double faults, and players love them. That's where Dent's chance went down the drain, and Djokovic prevailed yet again. Let's go to Andy Roddick versus Andy Murray in the 2009 semi-final here. Murray lost that match because he couldn't get enough of his first serves in. When you don't get that first serve in, you have to look to your second serve, and that's a, a real art in tennis, especially at the top level. A good second serve can get you out of trouble a lot of time, and players uh, practice this. Uh, so much because you can't always rely on the first serve to get you out of trouble. That was a key factor in Roddick winning that match. The serve in the women's game is slightly different. Uh, they don't have as much power and you get a lot more breaks against servers. But what is very important is the accuracy of the serve. Now let's look at the Williams sisters final of 2009 which Serena won. Serena's accuracy in that match was extraordinary. 94% of her first services went in. Right, so if you get the first serve in, in a women's match and you've got a decent serve, you're doing really well and are almost certain to win. Let's move on now to 2011, the semi-final between Nadal and Andy Murray. There's a combination of factors in this one, according to the statistics. Murray outserved Nadal 15 aces to six, but in that match, Nadal uh, had more courage at the net, was more willing to go to the net, took more chances, but it was Nadal who seized the moment, and the moment is, in, is absolutely vital in tennis. If you don't take the chance, you don't win the point, you don't win the point, you don't win the match. Sharapova and Kvitova in the final last year here at Wimbledon. Kvitova ha had a really good tournament. Sharapova not quite so good and wasn't maybe feeling as confident as Kvitova was. Kvitova hit 19 clear winners to Sharapova's 10. And they came more or less when they should have done at key moments. And that's why Kvitova is the defending Wimbledon champion. The statistics are fascinating. But what's more important, or just as important perhaps, is the ability to seize the moment. When the opportunity arrives, not to let it go. Uh, Andy Murray has learned that to his cost over the years in semi-finals and finals against Rafa Nadal, Roger Federer and Novak Djokovic. Uh, he knows the moment's there, as do, does every player. It's a matter of waiting till the right time and not missing it, because quite often that moment does not come again. <laughs>